Hello, it's Maxine. I'm just uh, taking a little trip out of the house. I was gonna go find a laundry mat, so pardon the mess back there. Anyway, for I have a very low battery, so I'm gonna just try to do this quick today. Um, I just did two videos that were based off of Jubilee videos on YouTube. Um, one was autism versus neurotypical, like, and then a questionnaire and tr like trying to see if like similarities between groups of people and differences and stuff like that. And the next one, I had to change locations. So where was I? So Jubilee Spectrum. Do all people with ADHD think the same? I've always known I have ADHD. And then I guess it's like strongly agree, somewhat agree, neutral, somewhat disagree, strongly agree. Well, I always kind of knew something was different about me versus the rest. And then because of the way I was bullied or abused in my life like I always thought I used to always say that my brain was like a goldfish like a three second memory because <laughs> it is like that sometimes like I have a really bad short-term memory but I have a pretty good long-term memory so <clears throat> yeah I, uh, I guess I'll say somewhat agree because I because I definitely didn't know the label for it I didn't know I had ADHD or ADD at the time until because when I was young it was like called ADD and then it changed to ADHD but because I'm also autistic uh, they missed I wasn't diagnosed with either at a young age but like, I really, really struggled in my earlier years, and I've kind of been ashamed to admit this, but now that I'm a 35-year-old adult who's, like, accomplished a lot in her life, I'm, like, I can easily admit that my phone keeps dropping. <laughs> I need something else to keep my phone in place when I'm doing these videos. <laughs> anyway, what I was going to say is, um... I was ashamed to admit this for a long time. No one really asked me about it too much during school years because I was born in 88 and I graduated in 07 from high school, but technically I should have graduated in 06 because I uh, was held back in grade two. So that's the severity, like that's the level of um, my ADHD autism at the time like I was extremely behind and like not just was I autistic and ADHD but I didn't have my family support like I feel like I was alone a lot and I had a younger sibling so I was teaching that sibling what I knew but I had no one really mentoring me and like just a small little example of what I mean is like, I'm pretty sure it was like grade two, three or four. I was getting help with my French homework and my dad was French. So you'd think that he would <laughs> be able to help, but instead he's so impatient. He just takes the paper, writes it all in his own like handwriting and even corrects some of the errors that in his mind on and he didn't teach me anything and my mom wasn't French and so we had the opportunity to be a bilingual household but he just um yeah he didn't do anything for me he didn't teach me they, neither of them taught me very much it was always like other people in my life and in the community like they didn't even teach me how to tie my shoes or ride a bike or anything it was all exterior people like neighbors and uh, it's really stressful I've mentioned in other videos like 
more of the severity of the abuse. I don't want to keep bringing it up every video that I have here, but in order for you to get a full picture, I do need to kind of bring it up again and again. So the next question is, medication has helped me manage my ADHD. So with that, no, because uh, in my life, I've just been very fearful of medications. I already have fibromyalgia, um, a lot of food sensitivities. For a lot of my life, I thought like I was like really ill because anytime I eat anything, I felt really sick and it turns out that I have um, a lot of food sensitivities that I didn't know about growing up on borderline like allergies. They're just, they can lead to like, you know, gut health issues, brain fog, skin issues. It can, it can affect your mood and more. And I mean, I know this is controversial, but some people do say that going gluten-free with autistic children does help. And I think that, um, you know, there could be a possibility there because our gut health is strongly linked to our mental health and that. And so sometimes it might not be a full-blown allergy that's causing a reaction. It could be a food sensitivity and I think that we should all look into that a lot more it's just unfortunate though you have to go see a naturopath doctor and it costs money because the regular um, allergy tests are only going to tell you if it's an allergy or not not like a food sensitivity so <clears throat> yeah that's something I've um, always made sure to mention is just how important that I think seeing a naturopath is if you can and like, I'm really bad with avoiding my food sensitivities all the time because it's like dairy, pistachios, mushrooms, um, soul fish, like just peas and rice and soy and like there's just so many. But one thing I have noticed ever since I found this information out and I've like, and almonds and stuff, everything. Ever since I found this information out and I've like minimized as much as I get of it, my gut health has gotten just so much stronger and it's made me feel like better all the way around. But to completely eliminate them all would be extremely hard, but I really should give it a go because I haven't shared this, but there's some, um, there's some health concerns I'm having right now that I'm like really... I've been avoiding going to see the doctor about and the reason for that is I had like a really traumatic surgery a couple years ago and then and then you know like a year ago when I saw a doctor about something I was just really let down with that and uh, I haven't seen a doctor since except when I had like this infection sometime so I only went to like the urgent care and got some antibiotics so that's the only time I've seen a doctor in a year and um anyway there's a lot <laughs> I need to um really get to see a doctor soon because there's I'm gonna have to make another video about it I'm gonna talk about my medical background my fibromyalgia diagnosis all that went through to find that out um maybe more about my food sensitivities and then my like really traumatic surgery that I like almost died from and how I just feel like I've been completely um I've just been really hurt by a lot of the medical medical community and I think a lot of them have done illegal things like not um given me the right support and really like abused and mistreated me at times some of them not all of course some have been awesome and anyway it just makes me feel really sad and sick <laughs> so uh, oh back to the medication thing so I went on this whole tangent I actually don't take medication for ADHD like I think that probably taking it could help in a number of ways, but I'm just really not willing to take that risk 
like I was also told at a time in my life I have very good eyesight but I have two stigmatisms so I could have got the very lowest prescription glasses and I just said well if I start using them I don't want to depend on them so that's kind of like my backwards logic that's like for not getting medication and it's like it could help but I'm just worried about the side effects and everything like that like um and I'm sorry to the people who do have to take it and it does make a huge difference in their life and they're still fearful or they have side effects and may still take it and I'm sorry to like there might be a time in my life between my ADHD autism and depression, anxiety, CPTSD, and fibromyalgia, there might be a time in my life where I have to take medications and there's just nothing I'm going to be able to do about that. Like, cause I haven't been severely depressed in probably about eight, nine years, I would say. And well, whenever 2000 or 2016 was, was pretty much the last time I was like really, really depressed. And, uh, and before that, like, they gave me certain medications to try, but after just, like, a few days of trying them, I felt nauseous, and so I'm immediately like, nope, I can't do this. So I think I've only tried, like, two things like that before. And, uh... Yeah, but I am really worried about this health thing I need to, um... <laughs> this video is going to suck because I'm right by a highway. <laughs> Some people aren't going to appreciate the sound of the high, the traffic, but there's not too many questions here. So, uh, so I would say strongly disagree because I haven't stuck with anything. I'm kind of unwilling to try right now. I feel like I've kind of tried to manage myself and I know myself well and think I know what I can do to better my health and my mental health that makes my ADHD symptoms a little better, like whether it be sleeping earlier, not drinking, not trying, never really done drugs, like not smoking, not engaging in like kind of risky things not doing things to jeopardize like the place I've gotten to. One thing I can just be doing is definitely eating healthier, but that's another video for another day too, because I've literally beaten three eating disorders in the last year. And I've gradually, in the last two, one to two years actually, or uh, a year and a half <laughs> to be more precise. But uh, I've beaten that just by gradually like letting go of all the guilt and shame, not all the time, but mostly, and by just eating balanced. I still have to eat better because I know I get too much sugar, but I'm just thankful I'm at this point where I've beaten three. And I'm talking bulimia, um, anorexia, like starvation a lot, and um, binge eating truthfully I've like I've had little binges here and there like anyone would like whether it be special occasions or once in a while you just get like a variety of things but it used to be anyway it is a video for another time like to get more in depth about how severe the binge eating was before and how it led to like the bulimic behavior and and that was kind of on and off, like never consistent, but all the way from when I was a teenager to my early 30s, and I'm 35. So just to get a little picture about that as well. Um, so I have developed mechanisms to manage my ADHD symptoms. So, oh, this kind of goes with what I had already talked about. I'll say strong, or I'll say, um, strongly agree what is the other one like mostly agree or whatever because I know I can be doing more but I think I do manage it pretty well and I uh like I said about taking care of myself and I've chosen a career that like you know I'm not doing something dire where I'm going to be putting people's lives at risk and sorry I'm not saying that like 
people with ADHD shouldn't be nurses or doctors or healthcare workers or anything like that. But just for me personally, I know I wouldn't be able to take on something like that when I'm like, I did do childcare, but there was no medication involved or anything like that. And that I actually was like laser focused all the time on the kids to the point that maybe I wasn't having as much fun or being as, as engaging at times as I would have wanted because I was more concerned about safety and like in those four years no one ever hardly got a scratch not a bruise not a broken nothing like I made sure safety was like number one and <clears throat> we did have a lot of fun but I think you can understand what I'm trying to say with that is that I like really prioritize their safety above everything that it might have trumped like uh my interactions at time more just like observing all the infants and toddlers and making sure that they're all safe and so ADHD is being more ADHD is becoming more common um, it's probably not becoming more common. I just think more common. I think it's just the awareness behind it. And I think that for people to say, oh, it's like becoming a fad because of TikTok and whatever. Like TikTok and shows like Love on the Spectrum and stuff has just brought awareness to people who didn't know themselves or didn't get their diagnosis. Are there some people out there who's going to take like little teeny points from both and say, oh, maybe that's me. Yes, of course, but uh, the population grows with each passing year as well. So it's not just like it's become if it's becoming more common in any way. Well, it's because the population's growing. So of course, there's going to be more amongst the population. If you know what I mean. So, um, but like. Let's put it this way. Say there's somebody who is just barely ADHD and they don't actually qualify. Well, does it really hurt for them to reach out and try to understand themselves better, to get support or to feel validation, to better their life all around? Hello. I just got home. Earlier my phone died so I didn't get to finish the questions. There's only one last one, and then I'm so tired, I need a nap. And I've just been neglecting my responsibilities. I was supposed to do laundry today, but instead I went sightseeing. <laughs> okay, so the last question is... Well, they're more like statements, and then you say where you agree with that. But anyway, um... ADHD will prevent me from accomplishing goals in the future financially. Financially? Mm. Sometimes I can't even write when I'm writing when I'm writing fast. <laughs> like, look, this is pretty bad. Like, what? That does not say financially. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, you know, it all depends. I have to set realistic goals for myself. I've been doing all kinds of things in my life to try to help myself in terms of my habits and, um, impulses and stuff so that I'm set setting myself up for a successful future financially, like stopping a lot of my spending habits and becoming more of a minimalist and quitting a lot of my collections and things, even though it's tough at times. And, um, you know, not, <laughs> I have like, I mean, I wish I had a social life, but having a social life is pretty expensive too. Like, sometimes it's like, I remember, like, a guy at my work once is like, your shoes are like $100. I'm like, 
okay, well, you could go to a restaurant back in the day, like, go for a dinner and then buy a bunch of drinks and it's like easily a hundred dollars like those pair of shoes have brought me so much comfort like for joint and foot pain and knee and leg and it's unbelievable i used to never wear runners because i was like i had more of a girly aesthetic and i didn't like it didn't really go with anything but then half the time i was always wearing like yoga pants and like kind of gym wear anyways I should have been wearing runners so yeah I've like eliminated flats and I wear like really good shoes now and it helps my fibromyalgia so much I'm gonna make that a video someday and hopefully I get sponsored <laughs> just kidding <laughs> oh, my shoes I've had a year I have to probably throw away now because the other day I went into the sea with them and then they took forever to dry well not like went into the sea i was walking along the shore with my dogs and they got wet and then they like stink even though i tried cleaning them and everything because <laughs> it took like three four days to dry <laughs> even though they were like right by my dehumidifier and everything Anyway, so to finish the question, it's completely neutral because it's all dependent on me and if I can, like, stick to my goals and... Oh, I just realized the dehumidifier was on this video, so yeah, people... it's going to be annoying hearing that. Anyway, um... But I also do believe, like, in the power of uh, manifestation, so I have to really believe in myself and be positive and a lot of what I said set out to do in life I do accomplish when I really set my mind to it so um no it's not gonna prevent autism is not gonna whatever the question was <laughs> okay well thanks for watching my video and um I have so many more videos to come, like, I can talk about autism, I can talk about CPTSD, I can talk about...